Uh, this 2021 has been a fantastic, exciting year because as we've reflected with Michael from the beginnings of Flux um, and reflected through the journey through the CNCF, we as a company at Weaveworks have built Weave GitOps, a product that is built on Flux. And so we're very excited to have first uh, Liz Warner, the SVP of engineering from our company, uh, sharing a few words. And then after that, we'll have Mark Ram who will be showing uh, GitOps at work. So Liz, how are you doing? Hey, I'm great. I'm really yes. happy to be here. Excellent. And Liz is hailing from the UK as well, right? Yeah, many UK people, well, as well, as well as from our other speakers. I'm hailing from Oakland. Uh, so great, Liz, uh, tell us you've joined our company during this exciting time and tell us your thoughts about Weave GitOps. Right. I'm happy to do that. Yep, yeah, so the accent is a trick. Um, I'm UK based, I've been UK based for about 10 years now. Um, so I'm, I'm Senior Vice President of Engineering at WeaveWorks. Um, and new joiner just joined this summer um, and just, just beyond delighted to be part of the GitOps company. Um, I'm joining after a couple of decades as a technologist, um, in particular the past 10 years or so as a technology leader. Um, again, in, yeah, in, in the UK. Um, so I'll be introducing my colleague, Mark Ram, who's director of product here, and he'll do a demo of Weave GitOps. Um, but before I do that, kind of in line with what Tomo and, and Kingdon have been saying, I want to talk a little bit about my personal journey with Flux and with GitOps and how I see the benefits of GitOps. Um, so I'm, I'm, I've been perhaps unusual and definitely lucky enough to use GitOps or to lead the practice of GitOps in a couple, uh, a couple different roles. And I wanna talk about one of them in particular. Um, so I got to know GitOps and I got to know Flux a couple of years ago when I was interim CTO at a neo bank here in the UK called Metal. So there's a, there's for folks who don't know or in this region, there's kind of a trend going on um, just to spin up new banks. So new kind of modern app-based cloud native banks. Um, and about half the time, frequently they're backed by larger incumbent, you know, banks or, or enterprises with a real hunger to, to modernize. Um, now we've got case studies on the Weaveworks website about Metal and Steve Wade, who I know some folks on this call already know. Steve was the platform lead who brought the Get Up, brought GitOps to Metal. He's written some case studies like he's written elsewhere online. We can definitely, you know, you can go into the details of what we did, which is not what I'll do here. But I wanna kind of talk about the problems we were looking to solve and why we went towards GitOps as um, for cloud native operations. So as Metal, we were a group really designed to be forward thinking. So we had not only an opportunity, but an obligation to kind of find best practices around software development, around software architecture, and most critically for this conversation around um, infrastructure and cloud native operations. So we had a bunch of jobs to do. You know, we were very busy from early on um, designing and building and scale, indeed scaling a microservice based application, you know, standard good practice, nothing surprising there. We we're also building our communities of practice. Um, so we wanted to deploy this complex banking application uh, many, many, many times a day and deploy it safely. Um, we wanted, and in fact, we needed fast and painless error recovery. And we wanted self-documenting deploy, self deployments that people in our engineering communities could use as a reference for understanding the state of our system and that the evolution of that system. So with all these needs, GitOps made perfect sense. You know, it gave us a way to automate our, operate, our, our operations and kind of continually reconcile those, auto, those operations against the declarative model of the system that lived outside the system. So you know, unsurprisingly for us, we sort that model in Git. Um, so when I was at Mental, this is a few years ago, we used the first version of Flux. Um, and it's been really exciting to watch the progression of Flux since then, of Flux and of Flagger. It was, I know Tomo mentioned that Flux made it into the adopt category of the CNCF's technology radar, you know, sitting there next to Helm, that's an amazing place to be. Um, it's, it's really nice for me as if someone has been a GitOps fan person for a while to join a company that's dedicated to continuing to support Flux as an open source um, project um, and to support the, so, so the Flux ecosystem. So as Tama mentioned, we are hiring. If you use your favorite search engine to search WeWorks careers, you'll see um, roles posted. Um, there's opportunities to work with the creators and maintainers of Flux and Flagger, um, and also to work on the WeGetOps products. 
Um, so we are dedicated, not just to Flux, but we are dedicated um, to, to Weave GitOps. So we've got Weave GitOps Core, which Mark will be demoing in a minute, which is a free open source and, a, and opinionated GitOps product. And we think it's got a pretty great developer experience so far. Um, and Weave GitOps Enterprise, which extends those capabilities onto a, a continuous operations product. Um, so exciting times. I'm delighted to be in the, here at the GitOps company. Um, and I would love to hand over, to introduce and hand over to Mark Graham, who will show you some, some of what, what uh, Weave GitOps does. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Mark Graham. Just give me one second. I will share my screen. All right. So. No, not share, present. All right, can everyone see? Looks like it. Um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Weave GitOps um, and how that relates to Flux, and then show you a little bit of the Weave GitOps uh, workflows and what's in, involved in Weave GitOps. Um, we already sort of had an introduction to Weave Works, so I won't go through this very much. Um, the key goal of GitOps in general and of Weave GitOps and Flux is to reduce the number of operational incidents, the number of failed deploys, increase the ability to roll back quickly, so reduce mean time to recovery, and increase the deployment frequency by making it easier for developers to get changes into production in a robust and reliable way. Um, I have been toying with the tagline of Weave GitOps that it's Kubernetes native, Flux native GitOps platform. We built on top of Flux so that you can get all of the features of Flux out of the box. Um, we built on top of Flux because Flux is the most powerful GitOps platform that there is. Um, and we built on top of Flux because we want to make the application and cluster operations experience with GitOps more readily available, more easy to use, um, and bring together a whole product that involves not just deploying your app with GitOps, but connecting that to CI, connecting that to your workflows, connecting that to some observability so that you can understand what is happening in the cluster and deal with issues when they go wrong. Um, Weave GitOps really comes in two flavors, um, teams and or enterprise and core. Um, we've targeted, um, so WeaveWorks has developed a GitOps maturity model, uh, moving from a GitOps maturity level of zero to three, where zero you are um, GitOpsing a single app. And as you move up the maturity cycle, you're GitOpsing more and more. You're adding policy, you're adding tenancy, you're adding more complex management of larger GitOps deployments. You need tenancy so you can avoid um, application operators stomping on one another by accidentally deploying on top of one another. Um, you need um, cluster management. If you're going to have large fleets of clusters, you want to manage those with GitOps as well. And Weave GitOps is designed to help fulfill all of those things in a slightly more, uh, slightly, we have a set of opinions that we include on top of Flux in terms of repository structure and layout, in terms of how you can work with the product. And we have added an application level abstraction, um, which is the beginning of the GitOps tenancy model of Weave GitOps. Um, any questions so far? I do not see any. Um, oh, it's going fast now. I don't know what happened there. Um, so we're going to start with um, Weave GitOps Core and how we can add applications and manage a set of application teams in different repositories in the same cluster, uh, gives them the freedom to deploy the workloads that they would like to deploy. Um, while making it easy to get GitOps installed on a cluster or get things going um, 
and give people a UI that lets them see the status of their application deployments. So in general, the challenge is increasing developer velocity without increasing the number of operational incidents and increasing the load on the operational teams. Um, so uh, we want a get a resilient and automated system here. The important thing about GitOps is that it is a resilient system. It is uses Kubernetes goal-driven deployment objects uh, and automates that and does continuous reconciliation. So you know what state your cluster is, you know whether it's in the state that you expect it to be, uh, and you can make changes to fix problems if there are problems. And the goal here is to increase the um, mean time. I don't think we want to increase mean time to deployment. We want to decrease mean time to recovery and increase uh, resilience, increase the chances that you will not have an error. Um, so here's a quick uh, slide showing we've GitOps core. Um, it has a set of applications that are deployed. Um, I'll be showing this UI here in a second. Um, and then it gives you information about the um, Kubernetes objects that belong to that application and how they are connected to the cluster and what their status in the cluster is. So I'm gonna escape out of this slide. I'm gonna go over here. While I was um, fixing that, I went to um, WeGo example and cloned a repository that has a sample app. Um, so then I'm gonna check this out. Um, All oh, right. I'll check out clone. What am I doing? Okay, so I have now a PodInfo repository. PodInfo is just a sample app that we often use for development or for demos. Uh, consists basically of two services, a front end and a back end service, each with a deployment YAML, um, standard Kubernetes files here. Nothing that is not Kubernetes native um, going on here. I'm gonna, I have already installed at uh, GitOps in this cluster, which is done with the command GitOps install, and that will install uh, we've GitOps and Flux into the current cluster from your Kubernetes uh, kubectl context. Um, so now I'm going to. So what that oh not actually in there. So what this is going to do is go ahead and grab the current uh, get repos upstream get repository for this um, local checkout. Uh, set up we get ops in the cluster to synchronize that application store the get ops automations in the application. Um, we have several options here, you can store the automations in the applications, you can store the automations in a sort of central platform repository um, so that we can support and we can you can store the individual um, apps in any folder branch. Uh, repo combination. So you can 
have a mono repo or you can break repositories down uh, one for each application team and then you can control access to who can update those apps in the cluster by controlling access to those repositories. Um, so I got to authenticate against GitHub here. To finish this. And then what's going to happen is we've GitOps is going to automatically create a pull request for me in this repository. Um, so we'll see that start happening here in a second. Um, also created a deploy key so that it can hand the deploy key to Flux so that everything just works. If I come back over here, there should be a new pull request. Um, the pull request adds, um, as I said, the sort of automations for Flux, sets up the Flux sync and the Flux customization controller. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and merge this. Um, so then over here, um, we can't see it happening because it's happening in the background, but if I flip over here, I should be able to see, I now have a new pod info deploy application. You can see the status of this application here um, in the UI. Um, I'm zoom out a smidge. You can see all the resources that exist right now. So customize is there. Flux is set up, but it is not yet synchronized into the cluster. Um, so I will come back to this in a second. Um, any questions about this so far? I can have multiple applications. I can see the status of my applications uh, in the cluster. I can see what is going on. Um, and uh, we will be, this is sort of the first version of the UI. We will be iterating on this as we go. Um, it's application centric so that you can enable application teams and enable application operations in a very lightweight and Kubernetes native way. Any questions on this? Um, no. All right. So, um, I could go in here if I wanted to um, and make a change to the deployment. I could say I want to have more um, pods running. I could change the background color in here. Um, I'm not going to spend time doing that. I think that's all sort of standard GitOps stuff that everybody in this audience is probably fairly familiar with. Um, but if there's any questions or anybody wants to discuss at a later time, I'm on Slack and you can ask me. I'm happy to show you some more uh, detailed demos. Um, so then I was going to switch over to Weave GitOps Enterprise in a second. Um, but before I do that, um, I'm going to come back here and talk slides for a second. Um, So as I said earlier, um, Weave GitOps is designed to fit both the needs of development and platform teams. It is designed to scale uh, GitOps usage within the organization. So the core, Weave GitOps core is open source. It is free software built on Flux um, that anyone can use. Um, Weave GitOps Enterprise is a commercial product that allows you to extend uh, Weave GitOps core with a variety of things um, like a more that coming soon is a more advanced tenancy model um, based on uh, WeaveWorks previous team workspaces um, and various things. The key thing that is in um, enterprise that many people are interested in is CAPI based fleet management. So we can create clusters from templates. We can use um, we've get up supports out of the box um, cap a um, cap D other cluster API providers are known to work uh, and you can create templates for any CAPI provider and create clusters sort of in an automated way enable self service uh, cluster creation for operations teams 
either application operations teams, if you're doing a sort of hard multi-tenancy, each app gets their own Kubernetes cluster or business units, we have uh, folks who want to use it that way as well. Um, everything here is standard Kubernetes. The templates are Kubernetes resources. You can control access to create and manage clusters on a template by template basis uh, using Kubernetes RBAC. Um, so you can create a cluster um, very easily. I'm just gonna show a quick video of this um, just because it takes a little while to create clusters. Um, so here he's clicking create a cluster. Um, we're gonna create a cap D cluster, um, type in the cluster name, other uh, fields are automatically filled out for you um, based on that. Um, you can choose, in this case, we're doing CAPD, so it's the Docker namespace that we want to use, what Kubernetes version. It creates a uh, CAPD cluster manifest for you, uh, which becomes a pull request, which you can then go over into GitHub and approve. So you can have cluster, you know, a team say, oh, I would like a cluster of this kind. You can have an operation team check that before it actually uh, is created. Um, so once the cluster is merged or the cluster definition is merged, the CAPI controller there will create the cluster and coming soon in a Weave GitOps enterprise release, um, we will also be installing a set of uh, profiles, a set of default cluster components that you would like installed with that cluster at install time so that you can create a cluster with all of the platform components that your application team might need. Um, I guess I have a little, couple more slides here to talk through. Um, so we have this concept of GitOps packages um, largely based on Helm charts, um, but with a upstream GitOps relationship so you can say be notified when there is a security vulnerability that has been updated and you need to update your clusters, et cetera, where you can pull upstream changes into your Git repo um, in a very GitOps native way. Um, and where you can manage a set of cluster components at cluster creation time, uh, profiles or GitOps packages can also be used in a variety of other contexts. You can have a Cassandra or a machine learning profile that uh, extends the capabilities of the platform uh, in whatever ways uh, make sense to you. And this is really important because this provides a DevOps style single point of truth for collaboration between application and operation teams about the capabilities of the platform beyond raw Kubernetes. You can say, I need Prometheus, I need this version. Um, you can say, I need a version update for my uh, app to for my app metrics for this reason or that reason. Uh, operations team can see that as a pull request. Um, you can use um, separate repos. You can use code owners in GitHub or GitLab um, equivalent functionality to control who can make changes to what clusters and what profiles in what clusters. Um, and then I guess finally, um, we've GitOps provides a package solution. We don't just give you some software and leave you to figure everything out um, on your own. We have consultants who have a lot of experience doing large scale GitOps deployments and GitOps migrations with um, media companies, banks, all kinds of folks around. Um, the space. Uh, if you have any questions on any of this, I would be happy um, to answer questions. Thanks a lot. Um, thanks for surviving all, through all of that, despite the house alarm and such. <laughs> a little um, crazy. Yes, that always happens, right? It just works out that way. Uh, I'm scanning the GitOps days conversations and there might be some just more broad questions about practices that maybe would be applicable to 
talking about weave get ups. We just have a few minutes, but um, you know, if one person was asking like, do I have one appo? Sorry, do I have one app per repo? And others asking about um, if I have a lot of apps, is it uh, one repo per cluster? Are there conflicts? So there's a lot of chat already going on, but I thought maybe you have some opinions of. Uh, well, I mean, we we have seen in a number of organizations that is like we've works itself in order to get a new repo i have to file a ticket um and someone has to create that repo for me so often i will run multiple apps in the same repo i keep them in separate folders i often have a branch per um life cycle stage so i'd have a branch that represents changes that are in the development process, changes that are in QA, changes that have gone to staging and changes that have gone to production. Um, and I can just merge changes through those branches across the clusters that are impacted by that branch. So um, that's the sort of out of the box default way that I use it, um, but you can, um, I just demoed keeping each app in a separate repository um, so that we can control access by team. Um, whichever way works for you and your organization should be supported by your GitOps tool. Excellent. Thank you so much.